I have arrived, not just at the spectacular Dean Park here, but with my overnight bag, because lucky me, I get to spend the night. Dean Park is one of England's most fantastic historic houses. It has roots from the medieval period, and then it evolved over the Tudor and Georgian periods as well to what we see today. It's been in the Brudenell family since 1514, but it really did evolve over these six centuries. I'm here to meet and of course to stay with Charlotte and Robert Brudenell, who are the custodians of wonderful Dean Park and I can't wait to share all the history with you and what's going on here on the estate. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles, and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, Please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. I'm hoping this is the right entrance because the doors are open, so I must be in the right place. But look at this fantastic courtyard. I definitely have a lot of questions, but I am spotting actually a lot of heraldry, so a lot of coat of arms. Hello. Welcome. I love the welcome, knocker. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> oh, lovely Ooh, to see you. So lovely to see you. Mm -hmm. Hello, Robert. How are you? Hi, how are you? Um, lovely to see you. Hi, now. I have some questions about the courtyard. Can we start there first? Let's go and have a look. Okay, this has history, doesn't it? Indeed. First mentioned in the Doomsday Book, 1086, so going back a very long way. Right. And then it belonged to the Sea of Westminster and it gradually got added and built to. So this section over here was added in about 1630s. Also when I was walking in, I noticed heraldry, coat of arms. I And I did, there's coronets, there's, you've got a, We've got the Earl's coronets up there. Yes. For in the, in the hopper, the top of it, because we had seven Earls of Cardigan who lived here. Okay. Bru Thomas Brudenall was made the first Earl of Cardigan in 1660. Right. And he built this tower up there, so we've got more heraldry up there. Yes, you do. And with the flag behind it, in your honour. This is my first overnight stay. Oh, I'm hooray. Starting around. Oh, well, so I, I hope it's going to be five star much. enough for you. <laughs> it will be. Okay, where, where are we walking into right now? We're walking into the Great Hall, which we've just had redecorated two years <gasps> ago. And it's got a fantastic ceiling, oh. which um, is made out of sweet chestnut. And we were always told that the little weevils wouldn't eat into it, but unfortunately they have. Oh. So we've just had it restored and we've repainted the Great Hall in what would have been actually the original color. Beautiful. I've seen a lot of Great Halls in my lifetime, believe it or not, but <laughs> this, I have not seen a Great Hall in this sort of good condition before. It's one of the last great halls that were built before they went out of fashion. We know it was built in 1571 because it says so on the mantelpiece right. over there. And oh. it, was, um, it was rebuilt because Queen Elizabeth came to stay here for the night. And Edmund Brudenall thought actually if she came back for more than one night in the future, perhaps she better have a bigger great hall. So he built this great hall, but sadly she never came back. By 1600, these great halls were out of fashion and yes. quite a lot of the houses split them into two levels. I'm just gonna throw this out there because as you mentioned the mantle, I did spot some Montague lozenges. There certainly is a Montague connection here. Okay, should we save that for later? We will. <laughs> Charlotte and Robert open a selection of rooms to the public on certain days in the year, but we will venture behind the scenes to glimpse how Dean Park is still very much a cherished family home. 
Now you turn left, come through here. Okay. Oh my goodness. I think I need to stay here for a whole week, Charlotte. You've, we've got a lot of books for you to read. <laughs> <laughs> and we're putting you in the bow room. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. This is splendid. Okay, first of all, I love the colors. Um, it's enormous. Did you do this? You said exactly the right things. This is the one bedroom in the house that I have recently done up. Oh and uh, it was a germaline pink faded wallpaper and raspberry carpets which were shredded. Uh, and it's quite a, it's quite a, a difficult oh. thing to know you've got to de decorate a room for the next 60 years. The other thing I did was I took all the books out of the bookcase and, and, and put my collection of Coalport China in there, lovely. which is rather pretty. So you did this all yourself? Yeah. yeah, I suppose I did, darling, didn't I? Yes. yes. I didn't have what a do you think of it, Robert? <laughs> I didn't have a say in it, I'm sure. <laughs> I just we signed, had, um, signed, signed, signed it off. But then you've also got, up the stairs, this is very important, a bathroom which has got the best no. view in the world. No, you're right. This is the best view in the world. The bridge I just walked over, and then look at these magnificent gardens down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you, both of you. This is, it is really a treat, so thank well, you. Well, shall we leave you to sort yourself out here and then come downstairs and have a drink? I did not expect this. When Charlotte and Robert asked me to stay, I of course said yes, but oh my goodness, this is, I mean, she's done just a brilliant job here. And this is what's so wonderful about these historic houses is the way that each homeowner, as they you know, take over, if you like, um, for their, their period of time, they put their mark on it, or they redecorate, or they add something. And this is exactly what Charlotte's done in this bedroom. You know, She's put in such lovely, bright, happy colors here, but then kept the horsehair uh, mattress. So I think that's what we're always trying to do as homeowners, is we're trying to make sure that, of course, we put our touches um, on it, and but at the same time preserving what the past um, had done as well. We're here on location at one of England's most spectacular historic houses. And we just wanna say thank you to all of our American Viscountess patrons. Without the support of our patrons, we would not be able to film at these wonderful locations and also to celebrate these incredible historic houses. So thank you to all of our American Viscountess patrons. And if you're interested in becoming part of our team, do check out patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all of our episodes, lots of behind the scenes content, extra videos, and of course, lots of American Viscountess goodies as well. And here at Dean Park, patrons will find out more about the historical characters who lived here previously, like Lady Adeline Cardigan, who very much enjoyed her time here in the 19th century. So she lived here by herself for how many years? Oh. 48 years? No. Well, she did go a traveling a lot. Right. And she did marry a Portuguese count for six years, but I think when he was brought up to Dean after a while, he decided that it was really cold and damp. Right. And that was the end of that. That was the end of that. She was an incredible character. And what happened was, was that Queen Victoria um, didn't approve of this marriage, and a decent folk didn't come stay here at Dean. It was just a very fast racing set. She lived in that era until she was 89. I'll show you a picture of her when she was in her dotage. She had, her, she had her coffin made and she used to say to people, I'm just going to step in it to try out whether it still fits me. No. Yes, absolutely no. eccentric to the end. Do check it out, patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess and help us to continue on making these extraordinary episodes celebrating some of Britain's greatest estates. The connection between the Brudenall and the Montague families reaches back to the 18th century when George Brudenall, the fourth Earl of Cardigan, married Lady Mary Montague. What I love best of all is the map in the corner that shows that um, my husband and my son are all descended from, from God. Right, And right. as I point out, as we all are. We all are. You'll probably find a lozenge or three. I know, I, maybe. Yep, I already spotted it, right there. So when was this created? Well, it's, I think the bottom one is the third Earl of Cardigan, so it must have been early 1700s. So it would have been early 1700s. Yes. 
incredible. Well, you can see down through here, and this is what I love, you can see the three lozenges up there, Montague's, and here is Sydney Montague, and guess what, Charlotte? Right below, Earl of Sandwich. Yay! Yay! <laughs> right there, there you go. And so he's got his um, garter there, mm -hmm. and Jemima, the first countess, and off they go, Edward Montague, the Earl of Sandwich. Gosh, you've got a lot here. Look at this. Edward Montague, Lord Hinchingbrook. Goodness me. I mean, wow. We've really, again, another Earl of Sandwich. That would have been the third one. So, no, that would have been the fourth. So that would have been the, the one who invented the sandwich. Anyway, not taking it away from Charlotte here. <laughs> But we're just, related, uh, <laughs> is, is, is what it is. We're, we're related. Kiss and kin. Anyway, all I, I'm happy about is that we're related. <laughs> oh. <gasps> and look at who's here to greet us. Hello, Minta. 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 Now, I briefly walked through here on my way up to my gorgeous bedroom. As I walked in, of course me and my Absolutely. eagle eye, I spotted those Montague lozenges. There's center there, right there. And I'm, I'm learning a lot about the heraldry. So, you know, because we have to remember that during that period, if you were a grand aristocratic or noble person, you have to marry somebody from a grand aristocratic family. So when you did, your coat of arms would be impaled with the, the wife um, the wife's family coat of arms, is that correct? Absolutely. So you, you'll find in the middle there that they've got so many quarterings. It's grandparents, great-grandparents, great-great-grandparents. Right. It was very, a very important part of the um, 16th century. Yes. And, and we've, got, we've got them also on the, on, on the stained glass windows we've got here. And the interesting story about this was that oh my goodness. on I, I, early December in, in, in uh, 1943, we had an American air base of three and a half thousand <gasps> Americans just up, up on the hill there and they were flying B-17 Fortress bombers and one of them early in the morning had ice on the wings and it tipped over and was about to explode and they managed to get into the local village and say, get up, get up, out, out, out. Right. Boom, up it went. No. And it broke all the stained <gasps> glass here and Robert's grandparents stored glass on top of each other, which you don't do because the weight cracks it even more. And then it, after the war, um, during the 1950s, my parents and all got a grant to restore it and with the grant came you have to open to the public and that's why we're open to the public. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Just like Bewley and so many English historic houses, Dean Park opened its doors to the public for the first time in the 1950s. And the Great Hall is still a highlight of the tours today. And this is the original panelling here. That is the panelling, the original panelling from when it was built in 1571. Now, I see we've got some polishing going on over here. Julie's very kindly it, helping us. Yeah. And I think you, you might join her, might yeah, you? Yeah, I would love to. So what are you using, big, to, using to polish it? A, a wax. Just a wax. Yeah, just a wax, yeah. And right. Put it on very, very lightly. It always go with the grain. Always so go with the, the grain. grain. Yeah, yeah. And little, you know, like, and you can feel it almost go, you know, it's, it suddenly goes smooth. Yeah. Do you try that bit? Okay. And, um. With the grain. Yeah, you just go up and oh, down. Yeah. And just And then just keep going. And oh then you can right. feel it suddenly go smooth. You can? Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. It's wonderful to be polishing something that's, you know, Tudor period. Yeah, absolutely, isn't it's, it? it? Just, yeah, you, it is. Yeah, yeah, it you, is. What, you talk, think you, about the people that made the, it and yeah. the people that polished it yeah, before. I know people and, yeah, polished yeah, it before. You yeah, think yeah. how many other yeah. hands were on this. Exactly. It's wonderful. So, do you want me to do all of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for a week. Thank you. What a really, really special place. And also knowing that this is one of the last great halls that was built gives it even more, you know, meaning to it. You, you, when you walk in here, you just think how wonderful. Thank you. We love it. Oh, yeah. We use it. We love it. So this is the moment I know I've been waiting for and hopefully you have as well. And that's really the history of Dean Park. It's been here for a millennium, really. And, but it's been, again, a part of the Bruno family since 1514, is that right? Indeed. This is the start of the tour, and this is the billiard room. Um, originally in the medieval days, it would have been a parlor to the Great Hall. But I'm going to go back right to the very, very beginning. And that is that it's first mentioned in the Doomsday Book in 1086. And uh, so we know that it was 
here. Yes, in yes. It was a monastic retreat. The um, See of Westminster, the Bishop of Westminster, owned a lot of land around here. And he would come up and stay here to survey his land because there weren't holiday inns or hotels to stay in. Yes. So it was a small monastic cell, a little square courtyard house. Ah. And it remained as such until the church realised that actually perhaps they could rent it out to families who would uh, let them, him come and stay twice a year and, and live Right, there. right. So in 1514, Sir Robert Brudenor took over the lease because it was a lease then. It, this is the first room that our visitors come to, so we try to give them a little brief about it. Right. It's terribly important because it is the one part of the house where we have just one item of medieval. And that is in the far corner, there's yeah, a little arch. Visit it? There, was, there was an archway that went into a Catholic chapel. And then okay. the other important thing in this room is we've got, we've got the charter, which is right there, that creates Thomas Brudenall, the first Earl of Cardigan. During the Civil War, mm. King Charles I was trying to raise money. Yes. And Charles I um, asked him, and the son said, here's a thousand pounds for your fighting fund. When things come good, could you honour my father and his heirs? <laughs> he was very canny. In 1660, when Charles II came to the throne, he said, could you hurry up and honour the debt to my father because he's, he's 81. Right, So right, we need right. that quite quickly. Yeah, we need that title. So three weeks before his coronation, he was created the first Earl of Cardigan. As we explore the wealth of rooms here at Dean Park, there are a few surprises along the way. Oh my goodness. This is actually a very modern chapel. It was only done in the 1980s because the parish church had, it's a huge church, and it had five members of the congregation all called Brudenall. Right. And they froze to death in there. So my oh. mother-in-law thought, well, why don't we um, make a, our own little chapel? <gasps> and this was the billiard room. And we've just seen the billiard table, which moved yep. into the smoking room because nobody smokes. Yep. Um, and so she turned it into this beautiful chapel. It's wonderful. And do you use the chapel? We do. You William do? was christened here. We're having a service next on Sunday week. Um, and we have a lovely little tradition here, which you can bring in when you live in a house like this. Yes. Which is that um, having gone to the, um, the Royal Chelsea, the hospital in Chelsea, every service they have there, whether it's a funeral or a wedding or whatever, they sing the national anthem. We sing the national anthem here at the end of every service. No. Right. This is the garden room, which we've just revamped, and we've made it into a sort of slightly older playroom for teenagers or whatever. <laughs> but I'm very proud to say that I managed to um, get back from our family the rocking horse that my great aunt loaned to the National Trust. And uh, she's come back here, and when I was little, I used to sit one end, my elder brother no. the other end. And no. it's got lovely graffiti from cousins. Yeah. And she's called Duchess. Oh. And she's rather she's, lovely, and she's a bit too big to put in a nursery upstairs, so she has to live down here. And she is a beauty. So these are Tudor. Yes. Unbelievable. And slightly revamped, because yeah. in the, in the, in the um, 1720s, they put a skylight in here. Right. When they built the um, oh. billiard room, so it was... Okay, this is a secret door. I would have never known this was a door. This is why I love these places. There's secret passages everywhere. Right. This room is called the Yellow Room. Mm. I have no idea why. And when my husband was much, much younger, his school folded and my mother-in-law brought back the, the headmaster and there was a little school here and this was their, this was their classroom. Really? Mm. Wait, this was Robert's classroom? Yes, for a while, for just a, while. for a couple of years. Yes. Couple yes. Of years. Oh, how wonderful. See, it's always stories being told. Charlotte? This is incredible. Nuts. This is the tapestry room. Oh my goodness. And once upon a time it had tapestries all the way around it. Okay, what about this ceiling here? The ceiling is dated 1597. Oh. And we do have some rooms above it which we hardly ever go into because we don't want to yeah. bang and make too much noise. Um, yeah. The oh my goodness. I mean, can I just ask then, because would this be considered a pendant ceiling? Yes. Because, yeah. You can see the... the, the yeah. Um, because we have one at Mapperton in the Great Chamber, again, Tudor, probably 1550. Um, but, this beaut but this is extraordinary. I mean, unbelievable. Oh my goodness. Such this a is lovely room. Spectacular. And so when you arrived, Dean, had this been sort of done to what we're seeing today by your mother-in-law? Or she had, and actually it was, it was um, well, after I'd married Robert, it was beige, this room, and my mm. mother-in-law painted it this extraordinarily 
tealy, greeny blue colour, which I think is magnificent. Mm, and I sets too. off her collection of Christian art. Yeah, We've got a whole lot of Christian art. And you know what the great joy with these pictures in here is? Uh, I use them for doing Christmas cards. Do you? Mm -hmm. This one in particular, yes. I think this piece of furniture is the very oldest piece of furniture. I think it dates from the early 1500s. Wow. Incredible. Obviously was used in a kitchen because it's got lots of chopping marks on yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think we're rather bored of listening to us? Mint is ready to go into the next room. This is King Henry's room. This is the room that King Henry VII would have stayed in on the way up to visit his mother, Margaret Beaufort. Right. Who lived about eight miles north. Okay. And she was the reason that Sir Robert Brudenall took on the lease here because he was her finance advisor and her executor. King Henry the Seventh. King Henry the Seventh. His mother. Mother. His mother. We've got a picture of her here, Margaret Beaufort. Queen Elizabeth would have slept in this room when she came for her one night. No. Uh, I would love to tell you no. that she slept in that bed, but she came in 1565, and if I'm a purist, that bed is dated 1580. Uh, so it was not okay. that bed. But she would have slept in this room, which would have been appropriate because this is where her grandfather would have slept. Right. And w this paneling that I'm seeing here, rather it... original, unique, single linen fold panelling. Yes. Yeah. And, and so when Queen Elizabeth was here it would have and been slept here. in this room, this would have been this here. This would have been here. Coat of arms. Absolutely. Absolutely been here. And then so, there was panelling at this window. And then as we are blessed in this house to have these little corner turrets, we have a bathroom no. using the panelling. No. Oh my gosh. This is wonderful. But of course, this wouldn't have been a bathroom when Queen Elizabeth was here. No, it would, would have been, been a powder room. But a powder room. Yes. Right, powder yeah. room. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm in the turret right now. Yes. Oh, I love being in turrets. There's one room which sums up perfectly how historic houses, like Dean Park and Mapperton, are layered in history as each generation leaves their mark. But what does this date back to? I'm all about dates. Oh, we're, we're going back to about the, the 15, late 1500s, Jacobean time. So this is original? Yes. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes. This is original, wow. 18th century, we've got a bit of Georgian panelling. Right, and then okay. We've got <laughs> yes. 19th century windows, 20th century no. ceiling, because this ceiling is a work of art on its own and was done by Robert's parents in 1997. We've yeah. even got 21st century. What's My husband and I went to Jerusalem about four years ago. Right. And we bought this mm. in the market. So this is a real wonderful hodgepodge of centuries. Yes, it is. Yeah, I love it. What I love best of all in the room are the two pictures hanging on the Georgian panelling. Dean Park is full of portraits of Brudenals. He was the steward and he was born in the village, educated oh. by the third earl, came back and was the steward at Dean, running, running it all. And these pictures were given by the third Earl as a wedding present. Oh. And note the blue silk. She's much prettier. Yes. And it passed down the Eaton family line and it came up for sale. So I said that it was incredibly important that we had hanging on the walls people who lived here. Yes. Who yes. are not called Brudenall. Right. So he's come back and hooray, hooray. Come on in. This is, this is my study, the oak parlour. Mm. Lovely. Thanks. We've got a portrait of King Charles II there, who was the one who created Thomas Lord Brudenall, the first Earl of Cardigan. Right. Three weeks before his coronation. Three weeks because it was a debt that was owed by King Charles I, his father, who was. <laughs> yep. And then he said to him, "Is he, that right?" He, he honoured. He honoured that he honoured the deal from the the money that was given for his fighting fund. Right. Uh, and so he was made the first Earl of Cardigan. And his, one of his mistresses was the Dutch support Portsmouth, Louise de Carouai, and they had, um, their son became the Duke of Richmond. Oh. And the reason we have him here is because he married um, the first Earl of Cardigan's granddaughter, who was called Lady Anne Brudenall, and we've got a picture of her here. Right, well, at least the, um, their illegitimate child became a duke. They were so all made dukes. Were yes. <laughs> <laughs> this Fitzroy. Fitz That's where the name Fitzroy comes from. Okay. Yes, because Roy is king and Fitz means um, the illegitimate son. I didn't know that. Mm. No. That's a fun fact. I could win that at a quiz night, couldn't I? <laughs> you could. I could win that as a quiz night. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. Now, what I'd love to show you is the work of art that I would take with me. 
If there was a fire, I would yep. grab the dog first, right, yes, then the husband. And then I'd come back and I'd get this map, which is from 1746, done by Brazier. And it's a map layout of what Dean looked like then. And I cannot tell you as a work of reference how much we have managed to understand from it. There was a river, yep. they added a canal, they merged them together, mm. and then they um, built this huge oh, bridge here and they made an enormous lake here. Because those were the fish ponds from, from, from the oh, um, right. medieval days. This is wonderful. So this is what you would take? I would take this, yeah. absolutely. It's fantastic. Look at Moonshot. Moonshot. Hello. Yes. Yes. Come on, Minta. Come on. Let's go. Minta must get a lot of steps in Good. this house. <laughs> she needs it. Have you seen how stout she is? I mean, stunning. The anti hall. Beautiful. It is well, a beautiful. Room. The anti hall. And it's because it's off the Great Hall. It's off so the it's... Great Hall. Right. So I think probably in, in medieval days it would have been a buttery and a dairy and a storage oh, right. room. Right. Yes, but now it's been made into our little little dining room. Yeah, well, it's, it's rather grand. I love it. Great. But we've got two lovely items in here. Right. Which I really want to show you. One is the exercise chair in the corner. Okay. Do you know what an exercise Would you like no, to... No, is it, is it 18th century? I think... Ex no, it might be 19th century. Basically, okay. without biffing your head, sit on it. Okay. So I can stand on this. Stand on that, yep. Okay. Sit on it. Mm -hmm. And you go up and down. Like, up. This is what they did, what, to That's work what their core? Yep. Okay. Yeah. We used to say to our son, push down lunch, make room for pudding. <laughs> oh my gosh. What, do they think that they just didn't get enough steps around these big houses? <laughs> well, you're not doing any steps now, but no, it, I is, know. it so is. It's working something else, it's working <laughs> yes. the core. Yeah. It's an. That is so crazy. And the second thing I wanted to show you, this was a, a gift to me and I have put around it all the most famous people who have been to Dean either for tea or for lunch mm. or stayed or for dinner. And we've got um, obviously Queen Elizabeth I because she stayed here for her one night. Uh, we have Prince Philip because he came here for the um, 1954 anniversary of the Charge of the Light Brigade dinner. And we've got Prince Michael of Kent, um, I put Earl of Cardigan, but that's rather generic, isn't it? Because there were seven of them. Yeah, but still. Um, we yeah. also had a visit from Her Majesty Queen Mary. Queen Mary came for oh. tea here in 1937. Did she take anything? No, she didn't. She did point out that uh, she had something that we had, and my husband's Greek grandmother said, oh, we'd quite like it back. <laughs> um, but that's apocryphal. Right, um, right, what she right. did do is she went round, went round the house, and um, she sort of saw all the shredded walls and said, um, amazing family that's been here for so many years, such a shame there's no money. <laughs> I thought, plus la change. Yes. <laughs> this is brilliant. <laughs> this, I love this though, this sort of en place that is, it's very clever. For dinner parties. Yeah, for it's dinner great. parties. How spectacular Dean Park is, nestled in the Northamptonshire landscape. In future episodes, I'll be exploring that landscape with the manager of the Brudenell Estates, Mark Coombs. It's lovely long grass. This is all part of a, a parkland restoration scheme. Okay. So we've stopped putting fertilizer on here about two years ago. Fantastic. Anything like that. And you can see the, well, the butterflies, all the, all the biodiversity and vertebrate life has really, it's really kicked in. It's beautiful. Yes. And helping prepare for a wedding. Right, so this, I can tell, is just a huge wedding. You've got the dance floor. So dance floor in the middle. Tomorrow, yep. um, the DJ will be setting up. We've got a big screen going behind the dance floor right. with the DJ booth and all the lights. Lovely room to come into for drinks. Can you just tell me a little bit about this glorious room and the shape? I think is rather splendid because you've got sort of it, the square edges there and then it has the, the bow, the, which yeah, is why it's bow. called the bow room. Right. So in this room, we have probably one of our prized possessions, which is the Brudenall Tresham Library. And it is a very important late 16th century library 
where we have books that are written in Spanish, French, Latin, Greek, English. It's a collection that belonged to Sir Thomas Tresham. Right. And Sir Thomas Tresham's youngest daughter married Sir Thomas Brudenell, who was also an antiquarian, so a lot of the books were his. And Fantastic. I reckon that it was her wedding diary. This wonderful library was confiscated by the parliamentary troops in 1643 when they came to raid Dean. And the Earl of, um, Earl of Cardigan, who was then Sir Thomas, Lord Brudenell, mm. he escaped. And they took his library away and he had quite an adventure, which I won't go into. But when he was let out of the Tower of London, he had to buy his library back. No. And the library uh, was uh, brought back, except for some of the books, which are now in an Oxford library. And right, but he was back. able to get the majority of yeah. Or he's the curious he had to pay them, oh my so goodness. I think it was more of a fine than a, than a repurchase. This is 16th century, most of these yes. books. Yes, and beginning of 17th century. The beginning. Yeah. In this library here, are, do you have a few favourites, would you say? I have one very special book here. Right. <clears throat> one very special book here, and I know where it is, because it's all under lock and key. Yes, yes. And this is the Almanac, the diary of Sir Edmund Brudenell. On August the 12th in 1565, it has got Regina Apud Dean. So we have the absolute proof that Queen Elizabeth I came here for the night uh, of August the 12th and August the 13th. Oh my goodness. So when people That's say, oh, incredible. she never came to Northampton, she, she yeah, did. She did. She did. And, and she, she stayed here, here. For one night. For one night. You have this but, proof. Absolutely. We have right. this proof. See, yes. that's what's pretty spectacular, that you have this in writing. So cheers to that. Absolutely. <laughs> cheers Indeed. to Queen Elizabeth I. Absolutely. And her one night stay. She yes. never came back, thank <laughs> heavens. <laughs>